Syria. Listen to what Vice President Pence says about the fight against ISIS. Roll tape. We're now actually able to begin to hand off the fight against ISIS in Syria to our coalition partners, and we are bringing our troops home. The caliphate has crumbled, and ISIS has been defeated. Joining us, Congressman Michael Waltz, a Republican from Florida, also a former Green Beret. So, uh, sir, what do you say uh, about the idea, the need to keep troops in, in, in Syria? Uh, and the president, the administration, saying ISIS is defeated, yeah. so we probably shouldn't be doing that. Well, you know, Charles, before we get into that, my heart goes out to the family of Chief Warrant Officer Farmer from Boynton Beach, Florida, actually where I was born, uh, who was killed in this week's attack. Uh, along with three other Americans. He, he left behind a wife and four young children who got the knock on the door Wednesday that, that we as special operators and as veterans, you know, just truly dread. So my heart's out to their family. Look, ISIS is defeated as a caliphate, and I give the administration huge credit for that, uh, for taking the handcuffs off the military and destroying that, ge that geographical state that ISIS held. But ISIS is not defeated as a movement. It can metastasize, it can grow, uh, and it can come back in the form of guerrilla warfare, as we just saw, both in Iraq and Syria. So my strong position is we need to stay on offense. We need to keep our foot on their neck. There is kind of this notion here that just, ah, just let them take care of it, and let's bring the soldiers home. I would love to bring all the soldiers home. But at the end of the day, I don't want to have to fight our way back in, and we need, we need, to, we need to keep them worried about missiles, Green Berets coming in to take right. them out at night, not attacking us back here at home. But, but doesn't this Syria attack underscore the fact that, uh, that they're still emboldened, to your point, even if we are there? And it, it, it just, you know, for, from people who don't have a military background, it feels like we're, we have a small number of, of troops uh, that, 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 that could become potential yeah. sitting ducks, uh, you know, without, uh, it, it's, uh, you know, they're not putting their, we're not putting our boot on their neck we're just sort of in the area surveilling everything, and, and consequently, we oh, become no, easy no, no. targets. Completely disagree. What Green Berets specialize in is we train and find our allies and our friends to, uh, to train them to, to take care of business for us. So that small investment, a relatively small investment, a couple of thousand troops are helping the Kurds and helping the Arabs to take care of ISIS and to launch those offensives. They also help with airstrikes, with medical evaluation, right. all the things that they need. But importantly, it keeps us engaged vis-a-vis -vis Iran, helping Syria, uh, Turkey, which cares a lot more about taking out the Kurds than it does ISIS, keeping Russia from dominating, uh, dominating the regions. We're doing a lot of other things by having that presence there. And look, I get it. We all want the soldiers to come home. Sure, uh, we but, still have 20, but importantly, but, we still have 25,000 troops in Japan, we've got 30,000 in Korea. Exactly. We've got and, hundreds and the, and in South And the American South, public has been pushing back against that, wondering why we have this such a large military presence, particularly in places like Japan, for instance. And, and yeah. listen, I, I understand what you're saying, but by the same token, uh, Russia is dominating Syria. They, for, they, it's de facto. They, they control it. Uh, it it's, it's, it's one of these things where people are very, very concerned that the, some of these strikes that we're talking about, could they be launched uh, from, from, from other places in the region? Charles. Uh, and, 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 and the Kurds, you know, could we get the guarantee their protection? Uh, already the administration has already told Erdogan, don't touch the Kurds. So do we have to be there? Yeah, look, I get it. But if you think or if anyone thinks this war isn't going to follow us home, I think you're sadly mistaken. We can either fight this in places like Damascus and Kabul or we can fight it in Kansas City. There is a reason that we haven't had attacks like Orlando and like uh, California and others in the last couple of years, and that's because we have them on the run. Let's keep them on the run. I want them worried about where they're going to sleep at night, not plotting and planning attacks okay. in Paris, we, London, and New York. With all, and due, that's, with, that's the, with all due respect, we, we, we got to go. I do want to ask you, is, will there ever sure. come a point when we can bring the troops home? Look, Charles, they're at war with us, uh, and this is, a, this is why right. I'm here. One of the reasons I'm here is we do need a longer-term strategy of how do we undermine the ideology, not just fight these individual wars. And I'm glad to come back on and, right. and, and tell because, you what that Because like. they don't need troops over there. The ideology lives on the Internet. It lives on the web. It lives in other right. areas that uh, we can't destroy necessarily. That's right. There's not, there's not we, a pure military solution to this. 100% agreement there. It's great seeing you. Congratulations right. on your win, uh, Congressman. And we'll definitely talk again very soon. Thanks. Thanks, Charles.